Slavonic dances are a series which is in all possible ways underestimated. Rhythms, orchestra colors, it's like fireworks of an orchestra in the 19th century. It is really a piece of genius. Why I want to present them in the entirety? Because they work that way. There are two series, one and two, both containing eight dances, and they are really meant to follow each other and to be played as a whole, not just selected ones. In uh, our case, we're presenting them in two different programs, which works too, and I'm very happy about it and with an orchestra of the Philharmonia Orchestra's qualities, um, you can really enjoy the details. Now the first series, with those first eight dances, its inspiration is more in uh, Bohemia and Moravia and the Czech lands, typical dances for that area. Given the success of that series, a couple of years later, Dvořák composed the second series, which remained Slavonic, as the title says, but uh, the inspiration is a bit wider. So it, it gets uh, more to the east. You can hear uh, dances which have Ukrainian origin, you know, these Dumka, uh, types of dances. You can hear one dance which has uh, Yugoslav origin, you know, Serbian, Kolo. Simply the, the inspiration is wider. There was rather a popular idea at one point in the 19th century that all Slavs could actually unite themselves in, in kind of United States of Slavic people which never took place in reality. But it was one of uh, the relevant political ideas and I think Dvořák without being too much interested in politics, subscribe to this commonwealth of Slavic people and presented the beauties of their genuine um, folk traditions in, in his cycle. What is interesting about the second series is and that it means a step further in uh, being a bit more daring in not doing the, the obvious popular thing. So Dvořák, for instance, inserts much more contemplative music into the dances, so it's, it's somehow getting deeper, even if it means being a bit less popular than with the first series. What I think is interesting about uh, our geographical area, what we tend to call Middle Europe, there is still this idea that the, the typical dances of the place, which would be, if I make really a, a very black and white statement, would be polka and waltz, are uh, taught when you're a teenager. I mean, a lot of people find it old-fashioned and the teenagers often laugh at it and so on. Nevertheless, they go as something really important, you know, the way you learn what it means to dance with a partner, for instance, you know. All these subtleties of social life in the dance are still, I think, present to some extent. It, it definitely was as I was a child in, in the 90s. But for me personally, dance is something I want to embrace in my life. And if nothing else, then a bit on the conductor's podium. I think Slavonic dances genuinely are like a fan of varieties. And there's really something for everyone in that variety. Each series, eight numbers 
one more beautiful than another and it's really possible to choose your favorite one, your jewel you want to pick and wear, which means to listen to it once more. That's, that's my ultimate wish.